Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. Alright guys, well hey, I have a bit of a different type of video for all of you today. This is the type of video that I never really thought I would ever make on this channel. And it's not due to the fact that I don't like these type of videos, I do watch them on occasion. But this type of video is never really the type of video that I was ever interested in making myself on this channel. However, due to popular request, I decided to go ahead and give all of you what you want. And you guys really wanted me to make this type of video. So, all right, I'm going to make it. You see, for a while now, many of you out there have been requesting that I make a reaction video on a video from another YouTube channel called Brightside. If you've never heard of Brightside, essentially what they are is a channel that claims to make education videos or educational videos and from what i've heard about them most of their educational videos are simply clickbait now brightside is a pretty big youtube channel last time i checked they were somewhere around 40 million subscribers and i had watched one of their videos before a very long time ago and i didn't know who were who they were at the time you see, the video that I watched by them, and yes, it was a Titanic video, was a video where they talked about how a Titanic passenger claimed that an explosion sunk the Titanic, not an iceberg. Now, obviously, I didn't think an explosion sunk the Titanic. However, what I did think going into the video was that maybe this passenger misinterpreted the bump between the Titanic and the iceberg as an explosion. You know, I mean, I could see how somebody would make that misinterpretation. I watched the video, never heard of that passenger before, and I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And then I turned off the video and honestly forgot about it. Then a couple of months later, I watched a video by my friend Tom Linsky, who basically said that that entire video was a complete sham. The passenger that they referred to who was on the Titanic, who claimed was an explosion, who claimed it was an explosion, basically was never on the ship at all. And they showed some other pictures of people who claimed to be this person's friend, and that wasn't the case at all. They just took a photo of some random passenger on the Titanic and threw it in there. It was clickbait, you know, it was just a clickbait video. Now, I absolutely hate videos like that, you know, like if somebody is making a video and they are trying hard to get the story right and they make a small mistake, okay, no big deal, you know? I mean, we're all human, we all make errors. However, the type of videos that I can't stand are people that are videos that basically sell a lie in order to make money. And from what I learned in Tom Linsky's video, that's exactly what the Brightside channel does, especially with their Titanic videos. So I kind of wrote them off and didn't think about it anymore. However, many of you out there really want me to watch a Brightside Titanic video and react to it on camera. So fine, you guys like to watch me rage apparently on camera so for all of you i'm going to suffer through a bright side titanic video and i am going to talk about it if they say anything that is wrong uh, which i'm sure they will i will debunk it here on camera and yeah that's what we're gonna do all right everybody so hey join me in today's video as i suffer through a bright side titanic video heaven help me So now we are officially in my office. I don't typically show this room on camera, but this is where I edit all of my videos together. The computer you see right here, this is my 2019 iMac. This is what I edit all of my videos on. This thing has been awesome, but I am planning to upgrade this before long. I also have a Windows computer right here. It's what I play games on everything, and it's the one that I'm gonna be using to watch this bright side video, run my screen capture software so y'all can see what I'm looking at and so on and so forth. And all right, just gotta mentally prepare myself. Okay, I think I'm ready for this. And just remember, I'm doing this for all of you, so just bear with me here. All right, let's officially find a bright side video about the Titanic and suffer through this together. Or at least I'm gonna suffer and you all are just gonna enjoy watching me suffer. All right, so we are now officially on, I just searched in my YouTube search bar for bright side and Titanic. And just looking at these thumbnails for these videos, uh, I mean, I don't even know what to say. So the first one here, a ship that could have saved everyone on the Titanic. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming they're talking about the Californian. But the title here is Watched Them Sink. 
Okay, and the Titanic is sinking backwards for some reason. Um, uh, okay, it is true that the Californian did see the Titanic, but they didn't really understand what was going on at the time. And I think I'm going to watch this video. I think this is the, I haven't watched this one before, but I think that this is the video that we're going to check out for this video. I mean, why is the Titanic sinking backwards? Okay, I'm not even watching, I'm not even watching the video yet, I'm already having freakouts. Uh, okay, it was not an iceberg, Titanic already cleans an iceberg, didn't destroy the ship. Okay, so this is the video that I saw, and before I knew what Brightside was and everything, and then Tom, Tom Linsky, he completely disproved this video, so, uh, I'm not gonna suffer through that again. Uh, what happened to Titanic's sister, the second Titanic? Okay, so I'm assuming they're talking about the Olympic, I mean, there's nothing too crazy about that thumbnail. I'm just not sure why the Titanic's funnels, they seem a little bright to me in this photo, but okay, whatever. Titanic survivor revealed his story of what happened. Uh, why is the Titanic sinking backwards and listing like that again? And what, what's up? What's up with the sea? Why is the ocean so rough? The ocean was dead calm that night. I haven't even watched the video yet. I'm already suffering. All right, all right, you know what? Whatever. Okay, we're gonna watch a ship that could have saved everyone on the Titanic. Let's. I'm sure. Like, I haven't watched this yet. You're gonna see me watch it live on camera. I'm sure this video will be historically accurate, right? I'm sure everything will be okay. Let's go into it. All right, we are starting the video right now. The twelfth marked one of the most terrible tragedies in the history of the world. The most unsinkable vessel. The pinnacle of engineering. Why does Titanic look like a high-speed passenger liner? It looks more like the SS United States in this drawing. Whatever. Engineering at that time, the huge Titanic sank. On that dark, moonless night, the ship had many chances. Okay, so according to this video, the Titanic's bow bumps the iceberg sinks and then the sinking scenario in this look more like the James Cameron film than what accurate what accurately happened but <sighs> okay okay moving on this is to save its passengers there was another ship just a few miles away that could have saved the Titanic but it didn't it wasn't a phantom ship and it's not some legend or a theory this is a documented reality there are records and witnesses' statements confirming this. Um, I don't think that's the Californian. I've never seen any colored photos of the Californian. The lifeboats, it seems like there's too many lifeboats on it. Maybe this is the Californian later. This doesn't look like the Californian to me. Just some, I mean, it looks similar, but it looks like some things are off. I've never seen this photo of the Californian before. And my gut is telling me this isn't the Californian, but I'm not certain as to what ship this is. If it is the Californian, let me know in the comments below. And if it's not, which I'm assuming it's not, let me know what it is in the comments below as well. But for strange reasons, I don't think this is the Californian. But why didn't this ship help? Let's find out what happened that night by looking at these events from three different points of view. Okay. Let's start with the Titanic version. I'm looking forward to this. 11.30 p.m. The moon hides behind black clouds. Visit it was a moonless night. Not, the moon wasn't behind black clouds. It was a moonless night. Y'all are enjoying this, aren't you? Ability is bad. Everything is calm on the Titanic. I'm did they, wait, hey, did they just say visibility is bad? Um, visibility is bad. Everything is calm on the Titanic. And black clouds. Visibility is bad. Everything is calm on the... <laughs> oh. I mean, technically, yeah, the visibility wasn't good, but it was a deception. It was the cold water mirage. From everybody on the bridge's perspective, it seemed like it was perfect visibility. It didn't seem like there was any problems, you know? They couldn't tell that the visibility was bad. It looked like everything was crystal clear and it was a perfect night. It looked like you could see for miles in all directions. Visi <sighs> I mean, if you're going to say the visibility was bad, you need to talk about the illusion that was going on. Because just from saying visibility was bad, it makes... 
Makes it sound like the crew on the Titanic was being careless. The Titanic. Under the captain's guidance, the communications operator stays in touch with the main wireless operator. through the radio. At this moment, some stranger breaks into the frequency, interrupting the operator's communication. It's unclear what this strange man wants and what he's talking about. The operator doesn't try to figure it out. He shouts at the guy, demanding him to disconnect. The connection is interrupted. At a <sighs> Number one, Captain Smith was not in the wireless room at the time that the Californian radioed in. Uh, number two, Jack Phillips, the radio operator, was talking to Cape Race, just trying to deal with the backlog of messages that they had because the Titanic's Marconi wireless system was offline. And this mystery ship did radio in while Jack Phillips was talking to Cape Race. And because Cape Race was so far away, you know, he had to have the radio turned up to maximum volume so he could hear the faint dots and dashes of Morse code. However, where the Californian was only 10 miles away, roughly, the radio signal from the Californian where he had, where Jack Phillips had the radio turned up so loud came through as a very loud ring in Jack Phillips' ear and he ripped the headset off, you know, just because he just got blasted by a loud ring in his ear. And out of frustration, he said, keep out, keep out, shut up, I'm working Cape Rays. It wasn't like, Jack Phillips was tired. He had been awake, what, 23 hours because the radio had been down the night before and they spent all day fixing it and everything. And, I mean, it was just, it was just bad timing. You know, Jack Phillips was tired, and the Californian radio in at a bad moment, and Jack Phillips reacted accordingly. It was just, uh, it was an accident. It shouldn't have happened, but I understand why it happened. It wasn't like what they just said here with Captain Smith right there and Jack Phillips right there and going, oh, what's this ship want? Eh, no big deal. No, it wasn't like that at all. It wasn't like that at all. Okay, moving on. 11.40 p.m., the Titanic crashes into an iceberg. The ice there's that animation again. Water begins to flood the lower decks. Nobody okay. is panicking yet. 20 minutes later, at midnight, the ship's crew sends a distress signal through the radio frequency. 1230-ish. That's when the first transmission went out. Not at midnight. They were still trying to figure out what was going on with the Titanic at midnight. Few people understand how bad the situation really is. After 20 minutes, at 1220 a.m., they start lowering lifeboats with passengers. 12.40 a.m., the first lifeboat left, not 12.20. At 12.25 a.m., they receive a response to the distress signal. This is RMS Carpathia. Their captain reports they're already... 12.25, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right at all. Hang on a second. I think it was more like 12.35, wasn't it? It wasn't 12.20. Anyway. Sailing at maximum speed towards the Titanic. But the problem is that the crash site is 58 miles away. This means 55. Carpathia will okay. only be here in four hours. That's not terribly wrong, so I'll leave that alone. At 12.45 a.m., the sinking ship's crew release rockets into the air. These flares are one of the main reasons for the terrible fate of many passengers. But more on that later. 90 minutes later, the Titanic's deck breaks and the ship dives underwater. At 4.10 a.m., the Carpathia finally arrives at the shipwreck location. The crew members make heroic efforts to save all the people. They take 705 survivors on board. At this moment, another ship appears. It's SS Californian. The Carpathia sails towards the New York coast with all the people. The Californian floats in search of passengers and finds nothing but wreckage. The ship was only a few miles away while the Titanic sank into the icy water. The Californian could have saved these people, but did nothing. Its captain, Stanley Lord, made one of the most terrible acts that a sailor can allow. He didn't help a sinking ship. When the world found out about all this, they detested Captain Lord. They couldn't bring charges against him, and the trial didn't punish him. But his career was ruined entirely, as no other ship company would hire him. Despite this, he... Okay, so I'm only three minutes into the video, and maybe they'll clarify this later. Maybe. But the way they paint Stanley Lord here is like he intentionally watched the Titanic sink and chose to do nothing. 
I'm hoping they'll clarify this. I'm hoping that they'll be more... I'm hoping that they'll tell the real story because while it is true that the Californians saw the Titanic, they didn't understand what was going on. They just didn't. And it's not like Stanley Lord was like, oh, there's the Titanic and we're not going to help. It wasn't like that at all. It was just he didn't understand what he was watching. Well, Stanley Lord was in bed, but the crew of the California didn't understand what was going on. You know, Stanley Lord should have just woken up the wireless guy and took a few additional steps to find out what was happening. Not, it wasn't, oh, there's Titanic sinking. We're not going to help. That's not what happened at all. But Moving on. Never confessed he had been guilty. Before he passed away, the captain said it hadn't been his fault. If this was true, then what happened there? This brings us to the Californian version. It's the night of April 14th. The Californian is sailing in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. That cutout looks absolutely awful, but whatever. The ship gets into a section with a lot of icebergs. Kay. At 10, 10 p.m., Captain Lord stops the ship. It's too dangerous to move around this area as they can damage the hull. Okay. At 11 p.m., the ship starts drifting. It's impossible to move in such conditions with such poor visibility. The captain knows that the Titanic is coming here, so he orders the radio operator to warn the ship about the danger. Radio operator Evans turns on the receiver and tries to contact the Titanic. He spends about 30 minutes on it. The connection is finally established. At this moment, the Titanic radio operator is speaking with the mainland. Evans interrupts this conversation and tries to warn the ship about icebergs. The operator doesn't understand Evans' words. He's annoyed because Evans broke into the channel so brazenly. He shouts at Evans and cuts the connection. Tired, Evans turns off the receiver and informs his superiors about the incident. It's still a mystery how the captain reacted to this news. He probably thought the Titanic knew about the danger. He lets Evans go to bed. If Evans hadn't turned off the radio and would I mean, we talked about this earlier. I mean, it's, eh, I mean, it's just, they need, they need to go into more detail here. You know, they need to, they need to explain what happened here. I mean, Jack Phelps just tired. He was annoyed. They just, they just, they don't, they don't explain it as well as I would. I mean, it's just, it paints the wrong picture. Waited one hour he would have heard a distress signal from the Titanic. But you shouldn't blame him. At this point, he has no official reason to stay at the transmitter. Evans is too exhausted and can't fight drowsiness. So, Evans goes to bed. The Titanic begins to sink. Its captain sends a distress signal. The operator on board the Carpathia catches it, but the Californian doesn't, since the receiver is turned off. Captain Lord can't sleep. He feels that something is wrong. Meanwhile, the Titanic... I mean, he was in the chart room trying to lay down. I mean, he, was, he wasn't up on deck. He was in the chart room laying down, and his crew were talking to him. You know, they were talking to him through, like, speaking tubes and stuff. Hey, there's a ship out here. It's acting weird. Stanley Lord wasn't in... He, he wasn't up on deck. I, let's see where they go with this. He's rapidly sinking under the water. The captain gives the order to launch rockets into the air. And here is where one of the critical mistakes takes place. They release warning lights, but they are not red. The crew forgot to take red rockets on board for some reason. So they lit up the sky with a bright white light. If you need to send a distress signal, you need to release red lights. Captain Lords. So I'm not certain about the color of the rockets. Um, they have found evidence on the wreck that the rocket, like there were a bunch of different colored light, or different colored rockets. They found them on the seafloor. The Titanic had a variety of different colored rockets. But I didn't think it was the color that mattered. I thought it was the timing. Because as I've said in other videos, the Titanic sent up distress rockets every five minutes or so, or six minutes or so. And in order for rockets launched at sea to mean distress, you have to launch them up in one-minute intervals. I didn't think the collard mattered. If I'm wrong about this, please correct me in the comments below. But it was the timing of the rockets, not the color of the rockets that was wrong. Okay, anyway. 
sees these lights, but doesn't perceive them as a cry for help. He didn't see them. He was in the chart room. It was his crew that saw them, not Stanley Lord. He wasn't on deck at the time. It can't be that there are no standard red rockets on such a massive ship as the Titanic. But, unfortunately, it can. Captain Lord thinks the Titanic is sailing away. Perhaps there is some unknown reason behind those white lights, but he doesn't really know. So, Captain Lord has no idea that the Titanic is sinking. He still decides to contact the ship. But this time, not through radio communication. Captain Lord doesn't wake up the radio operator and sends a signal to the Titanic through a signal lamp. Morse it's lamp. important to understand that many old school captains didn't take radio communication seriously. They didn't understand the value of this technology. I've never heard that. I've never heard that they didn't see the value in radio technology. Is that true? Like, I doubt it. But let me know in the comments below. I've never heard that. I mean, why would... That's why Captain Lord doesn't wake up Evans. He sends light signals, but the Titanic doesn't respond. It's called Water Mirage. The survivors later mentioned seeing the flashing lights of the Californian, but there was nothing they could have done. The ship's crew doesn't hear their cries for help. At 2.20 a.m., the Titanic completely goes underwater. What's with that animation? A little more than two hours later, radio operator Evans wakes up and turns the transmitter on. He hears many rescuers talking about the sunken ship. Evans understands everything. He reports this to the captain. At that moment, the Californian immediately heads to the wreck site. They meet Carpathia there. With the survivors on board, it sailed towards New York. Is that the SS United? No, no, no. Is that the Queen Elizabeth? <laughs> Did they just use, like, the Queen Elizabeth cutout <laughs> instead of the Carpathia? <laughs> Is that the Queen Elizabeth? <laughs> it's either the Queen Elizabeth or the SS United States, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad. Uh. <sighs> okay. New York. The Californian stays sailing and looking for people. They find nothing but wreckage. The Californian return. Can we talk about how the Titanic was two and a half miles underwater? And they would, I mean, they'd be floating debris, but whatever. Turns to the mainland. The news about the ship that could have saved the Titanic is spreading all over the country. The trial begins. Captain Stanley Lord and the crew tell their version. They say their ship had been standing still. Many people don't believe them, and some of the surviving passengers claim to have seen the Californian sailing by. Still, the judge declares them innocent. Sailing by, the lights were off of the Titanic's port side, you know, and the lights stayed there. It wasn't moving around. I've never, I've never heard that. I've never heard any time that said that they could see the light of a ship sailing around. I've never heard that. 1962. Captain Stanley Lord is a very old man. He calls a notary to confess something. The captain makes his last remark about this case. He swears he's not guilty. But if it wasn't the Californian sailing past the Titanic at that moment, then what? The Samson theory could answer that question for us. Is this that whaling ship the thing? The ship Samson is sailing in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. The crew aren't sleeping. They carefully study the surroundings, but not because they're afraid of icebergs. They're scared of meeting with the U.S. Coast Guard. The Samson ship's crew catch seals, which is illegal. At 12.45 a.m., Samson's captain sees white signal rockets. The team is catching seals in the middle of the North Atlantic. Hold on a second. So at this point, I spend around 10 minutes looking up the ship Samson and just trying to figure out more information about it because seals, while they do spend a good chunk of their time in water, 
they need to be on land a good chunk of the time to rest as well. And it just didn't make sense to me that a sealing ship would be so far out in the Atlantic where the Titanic would be if they were hunting for seals. I did find a story about the Samson that claims that the ship was hunting seals at the time of Titanic off the coast of Newfoundland. Well, if off the coast of Newfoundland means 400 miles south of Newfoundland, then the Samson would be close to the Titanic. But you know something? I don't think that's the case. And the more research I did on this, it seems like that all the information about the Samson is simply he said, she said. I had a hard time finding anything factual about it. And some people in my Discord even said that the ship was probably docked at the time of Titanic. So anyway, after doing some research on this, I can confidently say that I believe that the story of the Samson isn't true at all. I think it's just a conspiracy on the Titanic disaster. Be sure it's the Coast Guard. They turn off the lights and sail away. It's dark, so they don't notice the sinking Titanic. They return to the coast of Iceland and hear about the disaster. They realize they have abandoned the drowning passengers. The nephew of one of Samson's crew members reads about this story in his uncle's diary. The nephew asks for permission to publish these recordings. All the people realize that Captain Lord wasn't guilty, but unfortunately, he didn't live to see this moment. Actually, it's still unknown who is guilty in this story. Two ships were nearby the Titanic. Their captains were adequate people. They would have helped save all the passengers. Their fault was that they couldn't understand what the Titanic wanted on that dark night. Someone forgot to put red flares in the box. This small but fatal detail was one of the leading causes of the tragedy. All right, so now that I have suffered through that video, what are my final thoughts? Well, let's start with the positives. The only positive thing that I can say about the video is that it does a okay job in giving you a general idea as to what happened that night. However, that's me being extremely kind, extremely kind. But now on to the negatives. All of the specific details that it gives, or most of them anyway, are completely wrong about everything that they're talking about. You know, like Stanley Lord up on the boat deck walking around and watching the Titanic. Well, no, he wasn't on the deck. He was in the chart room. The rockets being shot from the Titanic were a multitude of collars, not just red. And as far as I know, the collar of the rockets doesn't mean anything. It's just, you know, the timing the rockets go up. However, if I'm wrong about that, please correct me in the comments below. But anyway, and like the times of the lifeboat being launched and more the more specifics about why Jack Phillips interrupted the Californian. Captain Smith definitely wasn't in the wireless room when that message came in. It was just Phillips and Bride. And of course, you've got to talk about why Phillips cut off the California. You know, you got to go into more specifics about that, which they didn't do. And do we even need to talk about the cutout of the Carpathia that was the Queen Elizabeth or the SS United States or whatever ship that was? I mean... Like, oh yeah, and the Samson. You know, it's just like, when you really research that, like the Samson, you should see that a lot of the information out there about that ship isn't fact. You know, a lot of it is he said, she said stuff, you know? And it's not the kind of thing that you want to put into a video and talk about as fact like they did in this video. And also, I mean, like, I don't know anything about seals, or I have a basic knowledge of seals, and even I was like, wait a minute, why would seals be 400 miles out at sea for a sealing ship to be out there hunting them? I mean, seals need land. I mean, wouldn't they stay relatively close, close to a coastline? But anyway, I talked about that, but you would think that whoever's writing these videos would go, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Why would a sealing ship be out where the Titanic is? I mean, anyway, it just... That video is a mess, and I can tell you this as a maritime historian, you know, like here on YouTube, I would be embarrassed to upload a video like that. I mean, like, it it really bothered me when I had that little tongue slip when I accidentally said Captain Smith's cabin was on the port side instead of starboard in my Captain Smith series. Like, that was just a slip of the tongue, and that really bothered me, and I would love to talk to whoever approved this video and upload it, but anyway... All right, everybody. Well, hey, I have now officially suffered through a bright side video. I hope you enjoyed watching me suffer. If you enjoyed this video, be sure you leave it a like. If you're new here, please subscribe. And thank you all so much for watching. Y'all are awesome. And I'll see you all in the next episode.
Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.